All right, we're on Tzadik Hei Amud Aleph, 95a. We have an absolutely wonderful story this morning from King David. Um, I'm just going to test my Aramaic skills. But before we get to that, I just I realized that we, we left out a line which concludes a commentary on, on the last Gemara. So the last Gemara was the story of Sancherev rushing through ten cities and then hey, when he views Jerusalem he says it's it's nothing no big deal I can wait till tomorrow and then that night he the angel comes in and wipes out his camp because that day was the last day that the Jews were carrying the burden of the sin of Noiv the town of Noiv we mentioned we explained was a city that held that was holding King David when King David was running away from Shaul. The town was not aware that King David and Shaul were in a rift. They, king David, they just knew him as the king's son-in-law and king's advisor, so he asked to stay in the town. They said yes. When Shaul arrived looking for him, and they playing, well, they didn't know, so they said, well, whatever, we have no idea. And in the meantime, David ran out, and King Saul killed, through Doye killed um, all the Koyanim of that town, leaving one survivor, as we'll soon learn. So King David bore the responsibility of the death of that city because he didn't inform them that the way that King Saul was after him. Actually, it was worse. He said he was on a mission from King Saul. Right. He, is, yeah, he completely he betrayed them, betrayed essentially. Them, yes, he kind of misled them. And then it's, uh, yeah. So the community carried the burden of that sin till the day before Sancheir attempted to go into Jerusalem. And he went on that day, he would have been successful because they were still carrying the burden of that sin. Because he waited for the next day, Overnight, the Jews are no longer responsible for the sin, or that the burden of that sin has been raised from their shoulders. And therefore, the next day he wasn't successful because that night, the angel came and, and smite, smit, smitten, smite, smite, smote, 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 smote the uh, smote. the camp of Sancherev. That was the story we had last time. So the Gemara concludes like this, and this is this is the line we fail to we conclude. Did, we, did as well. we, did we did which pasuk? We did do that pasuk. That pasuk I did. Miyad vahi ba'alalahu. Sure. I think I did. Anyway, the verse concludes. The Gemara concludes the story. Miyad right away that night. So you can see we're on Tzadik Kemudala, ninety-five A, and it's a little bit above halfway. The last word on the line is Miyad, and there's a little test before that last word. So if you go, go a little bit higher than halfway between down the page, a little bit higher. Yeah, the last one in the line is Vayahi. Oh, Vayahi. Last one in the line is Vayahi. And there's a little test before the word Vayahi. Yeah. So Vayahi and Umiyad right away, because um, he decided to stay overnight and, and attack Jerusalem the next day, Vayahi Balalahu wasn't that night, which was the night of Pesach. Vayahi Malach Hashem, and an angel of God went out, Vayach Machna and Asher, and smote the camp of the Assyrians, Sadcher's camp, Mea, Ushmoina, Vachamisha, Aleph. 185,000 men, all smitten. They woke up in the morning, and they find a pile of and they find a pile of dead people. Okay. That's the end of the story, as we just described it. And that Sancherev should have went, or thank God didn't, but had he gone the day before, when he was rushing through those ten cities, he would have been successful in taking down Jerusalem because the Jews were still carrying the burden of the sin. The next day, they were no longer carrying the burden of the sin, and thus, he was unsuccessful. And the Gemara concludes with this line, and this is what I should have mentioned last time, concluding the story, but I did not. And it reads as follows: Amar Papa Rabba said, "Hainu Amri Inchi." This follows the colloquial colloquial saying, that which people say, literally translated, "Baz Dina Bottle Dina." When you wait for a judgment, the judgment is lost, or the the the, the scrimmage is lost when you wait. So in this context actually here, it's like to the detriment of Sancherev. Had he not waited, he would have been successful. He waited so he lost his chance. But another way of reading about this is, and I think this is more, this is the colloquial saying in a more simple sense, is that when a person's in a, uh, uh, a fight with somebody, so to speak, wait it, wait, wait overnight. And next, sleep over it. Sleep over it, yeah. Because lamb needs to sleep. Yeah. 
Sorry? I mean, the, the, the bad means to sleep. Right, sleep over it. I mean, you'll wake the next day and the fight won't be so bad anymore. You'll, you'll have rested, you won't feel so bad. So even though the context there is to the detriment of Sancheirev, but it's, you could use it in a positive sense as well. And that a person's in a fight with someone, wait overnight, and the next day you won't be in such a fight anymore. Okay. So having raised the issue of the story of Noiv, which is the story of when King David took refuge in the city and deceived them in telling them that he's on a mission from King Saul, when really he's running away from King Saul. And the next morning or the next day or sometime later when King Shaul arrived, he basically slaughtered the entire, massacred the entire town of Koyanim. That's the Koyanim of the city of Noiv. So apropos to that, and in relation to that sin, the burden of that sin being carried over for, uh, for some time afterwards, the Gemara relates the following story. You with me? Okay. So the verse reads like this. The Yishbi Benoiv, a person named Ishbi Benoiv, Asher Bilidei Harafa, which is the children of Harafa, actually in the translation of the, of the, um, of the Chumash, they say the giants. But over here we're going to go with the Gemara's interpretation in that it's Arpa. So Bilidei Arpa, the daughter, the son of Arpa, this person, Yishbi Benoiv is the son of Arpa, or Mishkal Kinoi, and the weight of his spear, was Sholish Meis, Mishkan Lachashis was 300 talents of, in the weight of brass, of, of um, copper. Vuhu Chagor Chadasha, and he's wearing new armament, new armor. Vayoyim Lahakas is David, and he intended to smite King David. So the, the verse itself describes as follows that there was an attack, there was a fight against the Polishnim. King David led the battle as he usually would. And there was a fellow named Nishbi Benoiv, and this was his first day in war. He's a brother of Goliath, Goliath, and he wants to prove himself on his first day. It's like his initiation to being a soldier. So he decides he's going to go to the, he's going to go for the prize. He's going to try to king, kill King David. And the verse actually said that King David felt a little weak earlier. So he was, King David was in a compromised state and Ish Benoi decided he's going to kill King David and prove himself as a, as a serious warrior and avenge his brother's blood. His brother was killed by King David because he's, he was the brother of Goliath. King David's first kill when he first became on the map and got the attention of King Shaul was when he took down Goliath. Every day. Good Shabbos. Oh, good Shabbos. Oh, good Shabbos. Enjoy. Send regards. Okay. Will. So that's the simple meaning of the verse. But the way the Gemara describes Ishbi ben- Ish Benoib, the verse, I'm sorry, does, breaks it into two words. Ishbi Benoib. Had the verse meant to say that his name was Ishbi and he came from a town called Noiv, and it would say of Yishbi me noiv, from noiv, but it says Yishbi be noiv, which seems to be his name, one long name, but broken up into two reads, Ishbi of noiv. As if to say there's some connection between what's happening here and the story that happened way back when, when King David took refuge in the city of noiv and caused the, slot, caused the massacre of the priests of noiv. And that's what the Gemara is now going to elaborate on elucidating this verse and describing the story of this verse. It's a wonderful story. So says, my Ishbi Benoiv, what's the meaning of this verse? What's the meaning of the name Ishbi Benoiv? Broken up into two words, Ishbi Benoiv. Even though it's one name, Ishbi Benoiv. Om Rav Yehuda Omar Rav, Yehuda said the name of Rav as follows. Isha Ba Al Iske Noiv. This man who came to attack, attack King David came as a result of that which happened in Noiv. Meaning to punish King David for having caused the massacre at Noiv. A couple of, many, uh, many years earlier, when he was taking refuge against King Saul. So what's the backstory? God said to King David, sometime before this battle, before this um, interaction with Ishbenoib, God tells King David, How long will this sin of Noib be hiding in your hand? As if to say, how long are you going to carry the burden of the sin? You've got to get rid of it. You have to pay up for it, so to speak. What's the sin? Because of you, there was the massacre at Noib. In the city of the Kayanim, and because of you, Nikter Doyega Doymi. Doyega Doymi was forced to say Lashon Hara against you. Because you told the people that you're there on a mission. Really, you were there hiding. And then when King Saul came, he asked the priests, Do you have King David? And they said, What's your problem? I mean, we had King David as your son in law. Like, what's the big deal? And therefore, Doyeg had to then go speak negatively and, and reveal the secret. So, in addition to causing. So, first of all, he caused. Doyeg to stumble into Lashon Hara. I think according to some, I can't remember where I read this, that he lost his um, Haba because of that. Lost his what? He lost his world to come because of that, because Doyeg spoke Lashon Hara. 
And then by as a result of that, Nergush, Nergush, so as a result of that, I'm sorry, first of all, you called, you caused the, the city, the massacre of the city. Number two, you caused David to king, you caused Doeg to speak negatively to you. Doeg is a, is a warrior of King Shaul who had to reveal a secret when the priest told King Shaul that we don't know what you're talking about. King David is innocent. Like we had no idea that there was a fight between the two of you. So Doeg had to spill the beans and speak negatively, speaking Lashon Hara. That's number two. And number three, and because of this sin, And because of this, because Shaul did the sin of massacring the city, Shaul himself got killed along with three of his sons. So there's a lot of negative things going on because of what you did. So, God says to King David, you need to be, pay up for this. So here's your choice. If you want, your, your children will cease to exist. There will not be any survivors, no remnant of your descendants. Option A. Or option B. You will be captured by your enemies. So I'm a fan of Moshe. David Mela tells God, what do you think he would tell God? Which one would he choose? Getting captured or his children being no longer existing? Being captured. On the first, he tells God, "Rebunish the master of the universe, mutav, better, em sebiyat oyev. Let me be handed to my enemies, v'leich alazari, and my children should not cease to exist." Okay, so this is his choice. So now he's basically sitting there around. He's a, he's a, he's a sitting duck. He's waiting to be captured by his enemies because he knows he told God that this is going to happen. So he's waiting around for the day, not waiting around, but he knows it's coming. So Yom Echad, one day, that fateful day arrived. Nafak liskar bezai. He went to go hunting with a vulture, with a falcon. Uh, apparently it's a way of, of, like today they go hunting with dogs. They used to go hunting with falcons and falcons would uh, either attract the prey or I think uh, like poke the prey in the eye making it harder for them to run away. And then the hunter can shoot an arrow and kill it. Something like that. It's still a common sport today. For like the, you know, the rich and famous out in the Middle East, they still go falcon hunting or fa- hunting with falconing. I think it's called falconry. It's a real thing. Anyway, like it's still an existing thing, but apparently it was very popular back in the day. So King David is hunting with his falcon. Asa Satan, the Satan comes, Vedamele Kitavya, and made himself look like a deer. Pasik Begira, so King David thought it was a deer and shot his arrow. But Voloi Mati, the arrow didn't reach the deer. So Mashre, the deer, drew King David forward because he keeps on trying to go get the deer. And as the deer moves forward, so does King David move forward. The hunter keeps on moving, following the prey. Ah, the Amtelar is pushing until he lured King David into the land of the Pelishtim, which is the mortal, mortal enemies of King David. So now Ishbi Benoiv, now comes the verse. The verse we described before where Ishbi Benoiv tries to kill King David, and the verse goes on to say that he was saved by, by, um, by uh, Avishai. So this is the story. So he's being lured in by the Satan who dressed like a deer. He's being lured into the land of Pelishtim. And Ishbi Benoif sees him. Omar. So Ishbi Benoif says to himself, This is the one that killed my, my brother, Goliath. I want to take revenge. So Kafti, he grabbed him. Kamti tied him up under an olive press. Tied him up and sat on him. And put him under the olive press in an intention to torture him and kill him, torture him to death. In Savile Nisa, a miracle happened to King David, and Makele Aramituse, the earth under him sunk, and therefore there was space for him to survive under the olive press, and didn't die. And Hayyotik said, this is the meaning of the verse in Tehillim, where King David sings his praises to God and says, Tarchiv Sadi Tachta, you've lengthened my steps from below me, Bloy Matu Karsulai, and didn't cause me to falter. Right? What does the word kasula mean? And you did it, my feet did not slip. Yeah. So this is the meaning when he thanks God for my feet being extended. He means to say this, he's making a reference to this time where the earth opened up to save him. Okay, so he's being held by, he's being held captive by, by Ishbanoib, who's essentially trying to torture him. That day, it's coming closer towards Friday night, late, late Friday afternoon. 
Hava, that's what it was. And Abisha ben Seruya, Abisha son Seruya, who's a guard of King David, Hava Kachai Fresh Bedalit, Garbid the Maya. He's washing his hair with four buckets of water. So he's getting he's taking a shower for Shabbos. Chazinya, and he saw Kisme Dama, he saw spots of blood. Now she says four spots of blood. He saw spots of blood, which means there was like a sign, it was a heavenly sign that something's going wrong, something's awry. Ikdami, some say it wasn't a spots of blood that he saw. Brother Asayana, a dove arrived at Itif Kameh and was distracting him, flapping its wing, jumping around. So Omar, so Avishai, who's taking a shower for Shabbos, says to himself, The Jewish people were compared to a Yaina, to a dove. Shinem has the verse, you right? Kanfe Yaina, the wings of a dove, Nikba Bekesev have been plated with gold, with silver. In a reference to the Jewish people. So he's thinking to himself, what's the message of God sending me here? Well, the blood's clear that something's wrong. Or the dove is flapping away, something's wrong. The Jews are compared to, dove, to a dove. He knew that there was a peace time at the time. It was peace time. So what's going on with the people? It must be, Shemami know therefore there must be, Dovid Makadi Sarah, that the king of the Jewish people, David, is in pain. But Batsara Shari is sitting in pain. So Asal the he ran immediately to King David's house. Well, Ashkhat didn't find King David. Omar, he said, okay, what do I have to do? I have to go find him. But to now, the verse reads, Ein Reich van say, one is not allowed to ride king, a king's horse. Ben Yeshiva Kisa, you're not allowed to sit on a king's uh, throne. Ben Mishtam Shem Shabita, you're not allowed to use his, his uh, scepter. It's disrespectful. If the king's not there, he can't use it. But he needs to grab one of the king's horses so he can go find King David because he knew that he, would bust, he must have been by the Polishnim. Because those are the ones who would torture King David. So, Bashas is a but when it's a time of danger, so the halakha ordinarily is I can't use the king's stuff. But if it's a time of danger, which he's certain that it is, my, what's the law? So, what does he do? He's got to go ask the dove. Asa Shabbat Midrasha. So, he runs to the base medish, the study house, and asks the people there, Amrulay, and he tells the, he asks the scholars, Bashas Sakana Shapadami, sorry, Amrulay, they told him, Bashas Sakana Shapadami, that in a time of danger, you're allowed to take the king's, to save the king, you're allowed to take his horse or his stuff. So what did he do? He didn't even take the king's horse. Rachve le Padaya. He took the king's mule. For whatever reason. The Kamni got up, the Azal, and started going. Kafze le Are. The earth jumped for him, literally speaking. This means to say that the that the God speak miraculously his like the earth moved towards him like a like a uh, Belt. Yeah, like a conveyor belt running against, uh, running. Like the airports? Yeah, like running with a conveyor belt, as in that the place, the place is coming closer to you as you're running. <coughs> so the place came closer to him. So in other words, he got, to, he got there quickly. Bahadur Kamazgi, as he was on his way, Chazi, he sees La Arpa Eme, he sees Arpa, the mother of Ishbenoib. Ishbenoib is the one who's now torturing King David. He sees his mother, Arpa. He sees him to have a navla. She was a knitting, weaving uh, yarn with a needle. Kichazia, when she saw him running, so she realized that he was coming to save King David and essentially kill her son. So Paske Lepilche, she stopped Lepilche Shade Eloi. She took her needle and threw it at him, at, at Avishai, who's running to save King David. Svar Lemiktele, she hoped that she would throw it at him and kill him. But it didn't, it landed on the floor. Amrale, so she told him, playing innocent, Elam, you're a young man, Aisli Plach, Give me the needle. Give me back my needle. It fell on the floor. You know, she's an older lady asking the young man to give me the needle. He wasn't so silly, and he realized what was going on. He picked up the needle. needle. Get it back to her, but and Beresh Mucha the Kotla gave it back to her, but threw it into her into her forehead, into her skull, and killed her. Okay, Karchaz v'Yosher Benoiv. When Avishai sees. Ishbi Benoib. No, sorry. Kachazi Ishbi Benoib. When Ishbi Benoib sees Avishai, Omar, so Ishbi Benoib says, Hashta have been today. Now there's two of them. It's two against one, King David and, Yavi, and Avishai. They're caught literally. They're going to kill me. So I have to get rid of David quickly. He was under the olive press, but miraculously surviving. So I got to get rid of King David quickly so he can even fight one on one. Otherwise, it'd be two on one. So what did he do? It's amazing. Paschal David Le'ela, he threw King David up in the air. The dots lay Lerumche and stabbed his spear into the ground and hoping King David would land on it to kill him. Omar, he said, Nipal Allah, King David will fall on the spear, for Nikdal and kill him, and now I'll be one on one, I'll be able to sword fight with Avishai. Okay?
Okay? Omar Avish Hashem. So Avish said one of the holy names of Hashem. Invoking deep, uh, divine power. And Ukmul David, so David was suspended. Ben Shemayel Ahar, between heaven and earth. He suspended above his spear. Miraculously. So the Gemara stops the story to make a comment. The name of Le'ihu, why didn't King David himself say God's name? Why did he have to wait for Avisha to say God's name to save him? Why didn't he just say it himself and suspend himself in the air? So the Gemara says, Ein chavash asim There's a rule that a person can't free himself from, from jail. Or Ein chavash matas asim, a different version. That a person who's tied up can't untie himself. Like if your hands are tied, you can't do it to you. You can't untie yourself. Someone has to do it for you. So it's a way of saying that when you're in distress, sometimes the, the scenario is that you're so stuck in your distress, it's hard for you to see an angle outside in which you can save yourself. So you need somebody else to help you. At uh, at the Shefabrengans, we use this. You know, there's a person stuck in his own problem. Sometimes it's hard for him to see outside of it. So you have a friend to guide you outside of the issue you're stuck in. And this is kind of a similar situation where King David is in this problem. He's so distressed by it, he couldn't, he didn't have the wherewithal to think about how he's going to save himself. But Avisha is looking at the outside, says, I need to say, I need to save him. So he invokes the name of God and suspends King David in the air. Okay. So Amar Le, so Avisha turns to King David. My boy, Sacha, what are you doing over here in the middle of, middle of the land of the Palishtim? Why aren't you back at home? It's Erev Shabbos. That part doesn't say it there, but... Amar Le, so King David says, Look, Hachi Amar Le this is what God told me. Uh, God told me, God gave me a choice. Either I get captured or my children cease to exist. And I responded to him by saying, I'd rather be captured. So this is the day. That's it. I'm, I'm okay with it. I knew that I was going to get captured. I knew this can come be an end of it and finish. This is the end. That's why I'm here. On my lay, Savisha tells him, turn your prayer around. Switch it around. Take the other choice. Let your children be deceased. Let your children cease to exist rather than you be suffering. And he invoked the colloquial saying, which is, Barberich Kiro Lisboin, Lisboin, um, Lisboin, Va'at Lote Tsar. There's a colloquial saying, which is, Let your children be wax merchants and you not suffer. It's a way of saying that a person should be stingy on his own life because he wants to leave his children an inheritance. You're going to live your whole life in pain because you want your children to have an inheritance. It's a way of saying you have to live your life normally and whatever's for your children, for your children. So you live your life normally, not getting captured, lead your people, and what happens to your children will happen to your children. Okay? So, Yahachi, I'm a So King David says to Avisha, Yahachi, that's the case. If you think that this, the right thing to do is to save myself, I suppose not just for himself, but to save, to, to lead his people, Saya Bahadon, help me. Help me in prayer. Hainud Iksiv, and this is the meaning of the verse which we began with, where Ishbanoi, where King David was weak. And Ishbanoi was going to kill him, wanted to kill him. And he was saved by Avishai. This is the whole backstory. Where, Ishben, where David was lured in by Ishbanoi, by, by a deer, and then captured by Ishbanoi. And Ishbanoi was about to kill him. And who comes to help him? Not to help him by killing, but help him through prayer was Avishai. And therefore the verse reads, Vayazer la Avisha ben Suriya, and Isha ben Suriya helped King David, helped him in prayer to turn the prayer around so that he no longer will, so that God no longer has the punishment of capturing King David, rather his children will cease to exist. Amr Avodah Marav, and as Avodah Marav elucidates, She'azru betzvila, that Avishai helped King David in prayer. Okay, so now that they helped him in prayer, so he's no, so now it's switched around, so King David is no longer destined to be captured, he's now destined to have his descendants deceased, his descendants no longer to exist. So Amr Avishai Shem, Avishai she said, the name of God, and, uh, invoked in a divine power, and he landed safely on the ground, not on the spear. But now they're running back to go home for Shabbos. And have a karad of Pasrayu. And uh, Ishbenoib is now chasing after both King David and Avishai, wanting to kill them. Kimatu Kubi, when uh, as they're running along, when King David and Avishai arrived to a place called Kubi, Amri they said. The word, the name of the town, which is called Kubi, is comprised of two words, which means Kumbe, stop here and fight. But nonetheless, they, they were still afraid and kept on running. Kimate Beitre, when they came to a town called Beitre, Amri they said that the word Beitre, the house of two, which it means, Amri Beitre Gurian Katlula Are, that two cubs can kill a lion, as an us two can kill Ishbenoib. Amri so they needed to weaken Ishbenoib. So what did they do? 
Amrile, they told Ishbanarib, Zil Ashkech la Arpach Imich Bekibra. Go, go find your mother in the grave. Basically, he told him, I killed your mother. Just on my, on my way here, I killed her with her own uh, spindle, with her own um, needle. needle. Is that what it's called, spindle? I don't think so. No? Spindle's when you, you uh, Oh, spindle's when you weave, when, when you're weaving. When you roll it. Like when you roll it, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so by, by, sorry? Tell you what you spin the wool. Yeah. Right, so I, I killed your mother with the needle. So the, in other words, like, and he gets a shock. My mother's dead. He's like, obviously. When you heard his mother's name, Kakash. Uh, his, his power weakened. The cut land they killed him. Hanu Dixiv, and this is the meaning of the rest of the verse. The next, the next verse, which described earlier how Ish Benayah tried to kill King David, and Avishai helped him. We just got the whole backstory here of how he helped him through prayer. And then it says, the verse says, Az Nishbu Anche David. Then the people of David, his army, swore loy to David. Lamar saying, loy tate say oy tanim lachamo. You will no longer come out with us to war because you almost died. And let not the light of Israel, the lamp of Israel, be extinguished, and let not you, let not you die, lest you die. So, um, they, they, this is the meaning of the verse, and this is why they prayed and said that they, they made a vow that King David no longer to come to war. So, thus ends the official part of the story, and um, today's Thursday. Okay, so God willing, tomorrow we'll get to some commentary related to the story, and then we'll get to the closing of the story, and we'll learn what King David, Mashiach, is a sign of King David. And the verse here, we just finished saying that King David chose that his children will cease to exist. So we'll learn soon how only one, sur- why and how he had one surviving descendant from whom Mashiach will eventually, will eventually arrive. So this is quite a, quite a story. Even on this most plain meaning, it's a, an incredible story. But no doubt there's all kinds of layers of meaning. And to give you an idea, just, just to show you how you can, look, how, how you can approach a Gemara, I don't have the answers to, this, to all those questions yet, but just to show you how you can approach a Gemara when you're analyzing a, st- when you're analyzing a story like this. So there's the, there's, the, there's the story arc, and then there are details that the Gemara throws in. And that's, where you, that's where your window to see what the Gemara is really saying. By looking at these details that seem to be uh, irrelevant to the, to the uh, story, they seem to be relevant. For example, the fact that there's two different versions to what, how, what, King, what uh, Avisha was doing well, first of all, Avisha was showering when he got the news of well, why showering. I Meaning, it's an incidental detail. He could have just been sitting on his house and God sent him a message. Why does the message then? Why, why? And furthermore, not only did the Gemara say that he was taking a shower, mm-hmm. the Gemara makes a point of saying he was using four buckets of, of water. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares how many buckets he was using? One bucket, two buckets. What's the difference? So, when you find these little details that seem to be relevant to the story arc, then you know the Gemara is hinting to something more. Right? So I'm, just, I'm just pointing out, if you want to think about the story, just think of all the details that seem to be, that seem to be on the surface, not related to the overarching story, and those will be your window to understand what's really going on. Same thing with the... Rashi even makes a point of saying there was four spots of blood. The Gemara doesn't say four spots. The Gemara just said that he saw blood spots. But Rashi adds there was four. Like four. Like the four buckets. Yeah. Four buckets of water. Yeah. Four buckets in four... Bu- four pieces of blood in four buckets or something like that. It's, 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 it's a very particular, peculiar description. Specifically, he's taking a shower, and specifically with four buckets. Likewise, think of the fact that the first, their, their tactic for killing, first of all, on the way down, on the way when Avisha is going down to meet, to meet, to meet the, to come to the scenario, when Avisha is coming down to save David, David Ishbenoib says it's two against one. He's worried, he needs to kill King David. Then right after that, Ishbenoib is chasing the two of them and they're afraid. Yeah. What, what happened? Why are they afraid all of a sudden? Right? Um, you know, one say we can say that they were that they were worried that their prayer, their idea to f- reverse the prayer that King David should survive and his children should cease, maybe they're worried that pr- their prayer wasn't accepted. And that's why they were afraid they were sort of running away. But the first town they came to where the town says, stop here and fight, they didn't stop and fight. They kept on running. Only when they got to the second one, which this town meant let two cubs kill one lion, then they stopped to the fight. And what tactic did they use? They used a tactic of weakening him by telling him his mother died. I Meaning that's the tactic they could have told him right away. The first thing, before you're running away, why, why, why two it, towns? It wasn't the two that was able to overcome the one. Yeah, it was, it was this. One talking to the one. That's right, this, it was this message <clears throat> that scared him. Anyway, so all these little details that seem like. Ask a bunch of. Keep on asking questions about these details, and eventually you'll see. You know that, that's the trick when you're doing these things. Is you pile on more questions and pile on more questions, and pile on more questions until an insight arrives that answers all the questions. 
then you know you hit something right. So looking at the story, think of all the very different peripheral details and it'll point you to some direction, which I don't have yet, but I'm just putting it out there that you can think about until we get tomorrow. All right, have a wonderful day, everybody.